So once upon a time, a long time ago, there was a little girl who lived with her mommy and her daddy and her little brother Timmy in a blue house at the end of a long gravel driveway on the edge of a forest in Tillamook, Oregon. Now the little girl loved to learn and finally she was old enough to go to school. And her Adventist school was very special because it had 40 students in it. And there was a lower grade classroom that had grades one through four with Mrs. Denise Kernut as the teacher. And then there was grades five through eight with another teacher. So there were two teachers and two classrooms in her school. And she started through the lower grades and developed a love even more for learning. And finally, she was old enough to be an upper grader and be in the fifth grade. And in the fifth grade, you got to be in the same classroom with the grown-ups, the eighth graders. They were grown-ups. Wow. Well, there was also something very special about the eighth graders. They knew things that other kids didn't know. And this particular day, they had been out playing recess. Maybe it was dare base or rainbow tag, and it was time to come in. And the little girl went through the bathroom, and as she went past the mirror, she just double-checked, make sure everything was back in order after having been playing outside, and came into her classroom. And in the classroom were the older students. They were sitting on their desks, waiting expectantly. They exchanged glances as the little girl entered the room, and all together they announced, your epidermis is showing. <gasps> the little girl gasped. She had just checked everything in the bathroom. What was an epidermis? She looked at her skirt. She had to wear uniform skirts, and that was okay, and she checked her shirt collar and her shirt sleeves. She didn't know what an epidermis was, but but it was showing. And shortly as each other of the younger students entered the classroom, the older students with an expression of glee proclaimed, your epidermis is showing, your epidermis is showing. And each of the younger students reacted in the same way, checking, looking, trying to figure out where their epidermis was and how people could see it. Finally, the little girl couldn't take it anymore, and she said to the big kids, what's an epidermis? And they started laughing. <laughs> Don't you wish you knew? <laughs> Yours is showing a lot. <laughs> well, about that time, the teacher arrived in the classroom. He surveyed the situation, understood there was some drama going on, figured out what was happening, and he said to the little girl, why don't you look the word up in the dictionary? Now, boys and girls, back when the little girl was in school, there was no internet. <laughs> there were no computers except for the pet computer in the back that you could play snake on, but it wasn't connected to anything. You had to use books to look up information. And the little girl just couldn't believe she hadn't thought of that herself. And she went to the back of the room and she pulled the well-used blue Webster's Dictionary off the shelf and started looking. The teacher didn't say anything at this point forward as the little girl started trying to sound out eh, 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 ep, e. It starts with e, p, p, ep, e, p. And finally, she found the word in the dictionary and she looked at it carefully. And then she started to laugh too. And she looked around the classroom and she said, your epidermis is showing, everyone's epidermis is showing. And the younger student said, well, what does it mean? What does it mean? And the little girl said, your epidermis is your skin. Everybody shows their epidermis. You should be showing your epidermis. It's okay to show your epidermis. Oh, what a relief. Well, the teacher, having stood to the back watching the little girl find the information and see the students talk one another and figure out this important lesson, seemed to be a little joyful. As he knew that his students had the tools they needed to solve the problem and find the answer, 
He could wait for that to happen. Now, I was thinking about that and how our teacher was kind of like God sometimes. Sometimes God seems silent or far away, like he's taken a look at our situation and knows that it's hard, but he doesn't seem to be doing anything about it. But just like that teacher was there in the back of the classroom waiting for the little girl to solve this with the tools that she had, God does that for us too. And we know in the Bible, he says, I will never, never leave you or forsake you. We can have confidence that God is with us even when it seems like he's silent. Now, boys and girls, I have something very, very important to tell you. And you can have your grown-ups help you find this answer. Are you ready? Your physiognomy is showing 